Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some uh, feature in Workbench that maybe you should be taking advantage of that you aren't already, and then five uh, different commands that you can run in that uh, that will make your life a little bit easier and give you a little bit more information about how things are operating inside your Workbench. But before we do that, here's a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Brody Precision, your trusted partner for building automation and controls. Now covering the entire East Coast from our Philadelphia headquarters with team members spread throughout our territory. At Brody, we do things differently. Our Philadelphia warehouse is not just full of random product. We have thoroughly tested and vetted everything on our shelves, ensuring you can get in and out of your jobs as efficiently as possible and that we can properly support you should an issue arise even if you're the first customer to use a new product. We're here to help you from start to finish, from product selection to technical support with highly experienced team members in sales and engineering. We pride ourselves on giving our customers a tremendous set of resources free of charge. New to the Honeywell ecosystem? No worries, we offer customized training that meets you where you are and brings you up to speed. BP Tech Center, our software and documentation repository, was built in-house to keep you up to date with automated notifications on new software and important content releases from the vendors that you use, all available exclusively to Brody Precision customers. In addition, our web store, with its real-time inventory, makes placing orders quick and easy so that you can get that order in even if it's 11 o'clock at night. To learn more, check us out at BrodyPrecision.com and store.BrodyPrecision.com. If you have specific questions or you would like a quote, shoot us an email at sales at BrodyPrecision.com or give us a call 610-825-7200. All right, so today we are talking about the console that's in your workbench. So let's jump into my PC here and get started. So I've got my PC here. I'm not running anything yet, but what I'm going to do is instead of just going in and opening up workbench directly, like I would normally using that workbench, um, Shortcut, I'm actually going to do a console. I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to say yes to this. Then we just get this blue screen console. You may or may not be familiar with consoles already. Basically, the idea is we're looking at a specific location. In my uh, case, we're looking at uh, 4.15 uh, version uh, dot one for my Vicon version of Niagara. That's my location. That's what we're seeing here at the beginning. And then we've got a little indicator that I can type stuff. Uh, so if I hit enter, you can see nothing happens. But if I can, if I use different commands, different strings of text, I can make different things happen. So because I have this command line open, I can actually open Workbench directly from this command line. If I just type in WB, give it a second, actually more than a second, you know how Workbench is, um, Workbench will open and run. Now, what you're noticing though, is that the console is now open, so I can see everything that's happening behind the scenes to make Workbench go. So if uh, Workbench, say, crashed while it was starting up, you would get the error message error message directly in this command line window. Um, whereas if it crashed ordinarily, you wouldn't get anything potentially. So this is one feature we get out of the console. Another, if I do a control C on my keyboard and I do it again, you will see that Workbench closes out. This is not the way that you should close Workbench ordinarily, but if you have issues, some kind of problem happens, freezes up, instead of just doing a normal end task, you can jump into your command line if it is open and kill the process. We have some other commands we can also run here that will um, make our life a little bit easier um, when it comes to getting licensed. So if you went and ran uh, your workbench and uh, maybe you didn't get that host ID uh, pop-up window or if you needed to know the host ID quickly and easily from uh, a particular install of Niagara, you can pull up the command line here or the console and you can do NRE space dash host ID. 
and it will run a couple things and then it will spit out our host ID directly. This is the host ID for my particular machine. Now with that NRE command, what we're doing is we're giving it this host ID flag and that's what's spitting out this particular piece of information that we want. We can still also give it the NRE uh, command, but with a different flag, I'll do NRE-version, and that will give me the particular version that we're looking at here. Um, so I, I ran this from my 4.15.1. You can see it's giving me all that information. It's the Vicon version uh, and my different Java versions and things as well. These are all things that you may or may not be asked to do from our technical support folks as well. The last piece that you uh, probably will actually make use of um, before you go and run your workbench from the command line here is that you'll use the plat command and then you'll do a space and then you'll do install daemon. So instead of having to go in here and go down to the particular version and then do an install daemon, wait for that to run, and then open up your workbench. You can do install daemon here. Uh, let's do it again. And it will go and do its thing real quickly here. We started up and ran. And then I could run my WB command directly from the command line and it will open up Workbench. I don't have to go through my start menu and pull everything up and yada, yada, yada. Staying on the keyboard and not having to use your mouse is a nice uh, benefit when you can do it. Uh, as a flip side to our install daemon, we can also do an uninstall. So if you had an issue with a particular daemon or you wanted to switch to something else, you could do plat uninstall daemon. And I screwed up here because I put that slash at the end. It got confused because of it. And that time it worked properly because I put in the right flag, and the right command. So the uh, Niagara service was removed here and I could go and install it somewhere else if I needed to or reinstall it in this particular version if I was maybe having an issue and I was trying to troubleshoot something. So as I mentioned, Command line, super, super helpful. Uh, you may or may not be asked to do some of these things from technical support here at Brody, um, but it also can make your life a little bit easier as well. So hopefully that was helpful and informative for you. I will have all of those commands down in the uh, description below and uh, marked with the timestamps uh, as chapters in here on YouTube as well. Thanks as always for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if there is a particular command that I didn't call out that you use in your uh, console for Workbench, leave those down in the comments down below. Um, always interested to hear if there's something else that I overlooked and is helpful and other people could use. Thanks as always for watching and we will see you in the next video. Thanks.